Okay, friends, I'm coming at you from the truck, avoiding the harsh, harsh wind. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about limited editions and what I think of them and the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this video is not only inspired because I have a limited edition uh, tool here, but also there's a video that was made a little while back, I think actually now a few months ago, by the YouTube channel Cedric and Ada. And I really like him. I think he does a great job at a lot of different videos. And I love his uh, knife steel tests. They're really great. But he brought up this really valid point and I think that it's certainly been on my mind it was almost kind of like he was reading my mind when he made the video and he was talking about so he was talking about limited edition tools and you know why there are so many popping up but I think his video had more of a negative light and I can definitely understand the frustration like a lot of knife companies are pushing out you know, limited edition this, limited edition that, and it's just flooding the market. I mean, even just today, I was on Instagram, you know, scrolling, and I saw that Blade HQ is set to release yet another run of Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Tanto limited edition knives. So, like, we're in this kind of EDC community where so many limited edition tools are coming out. So, I put together just a little bit of my thoughts, and uh, I'm going to I'm gonna try to not read off the script too much, but just what I think of the good, the bad, and the ugly of limited editions are. Because with this limited edition, uh, Leatherman Charge Plus, you know, I thought it was good enough that I bought it myself. But even after I bought it, I listened to some of my subscribers and they brought up some really valid points. I mean, when I was thinking about this blade for myself, I was like, man, this is so cool. Why doesn't Leatherman just make this like the mainstay? But then some people brought up some points and I was like, okay, that, that makes sense. I probably, you know, if I was on a construction site, this would not be the Leatherman that I would take. So let's just jump into it. So we're gonna start off with the good. And the best thing that I see out of limited editions and kind of the reason why I bought this limited edition is that when companies, especially larger companies like Leatherman or Spyderco, you know, they make there are such large companies that it's hard for them to make individualistic knives for a specific person or a specific set of peoples. And so limited editions, in my mind, allow large companies like Leatherman to say, hey, you know, we know that 10% or 5% or maybe even just 2% of our con consumer base would like a G10 handled charge. You know, this is a, a knife that's definitely more catered towards everyday carry, more like street kind of carry. Or like some of my subscribers said, you're not going to see this on a construction site. This is just too easily damaged. You know, G10 would get shredded and, you know, it's just not a great idea. So you want something more robust. And by and large, that, you know, 90% consumer base is that blue collar working individual that's on the job site. That likes to have a multi-tool for those quick kind of pinch needs where they need to just do something real fast, you know, tweak something real quick. But, you know, having something like this fancy G10 would just get destroyed out there. So what a limited edition allows is for those people like myself who, you know, I don't work a construction job. I actually work in healthcare. So I don't necessarily carry this on the job, but I do carry this in EDC and I find it works perfectly for me because I'm not coming up against, you know, a lot of concrete or a lot of you know, masonry, stone, or stone, same thing, uh, you know, carpentry, you know, I'm not building houses, I'm not doing those types of things, and to the people that do that, it's totally respectable, and I'm not saying that that's a, a disrespectful thing for you guys to do, but for me, this G10 handled blade, uh, or not blade, but multi-tool, makes a lot more sense for my personal carry style, and so for these large companies, it definitely allows them to, one, create tools for a smaller subset of that community uh, that is Leatherman supporters like myself that like, you know, different options, things that might serve us better. In addition, uh, limited editions do a really good job at, once again, for these larger companies, allowing these large companies to kind of test the water for new things. So right now, this Leatherman in G10 might just be a limited edition, and I'm guessing it will probably always just be a limited edition, but you never know. They might actually turn around and say, hey, that did a really good you know, we do a really good job. And so it allows large companies to test the waters and see if this is something that's more sustainable for them to continue to make things 
things like G10 handled Leathermans or like Tanto uh, Spyderco paramilitaries, which once again, I heavily doubt that will become a mainstream thing, but you know, companies have done this successfully. They've, you know, introduced things as limited editions and then have come out with a full uh, production run after they kind of said, yeah, wow, that actually did really good. So what are kind of the bad, the bad parts to limited editions? I think there are some bad, but I think the worst part about limited editions, and I think Cedric Ada did a pretty good job talking about this too, but for me, it was twofold. Limited editions suffer from an artificial price inflation. Luckily, these Leathermans didn't actually see too much of that, but, you know, because they are offered as a limited run, because they have, you know, special, uh, you know, handle scales, usually special blade steels, uh, or special blade designs, like I said, with the Tanto version of the Spyderco paramilitary, it usually commands a higher price. And even if that higher price isn't commanded from the, um, the manufacturer themselves, the worst part about limited editions is the people that sit at home probably have nothing to do and they snap up these limited editions knowing how, you know, there's a limited run of them and so they go, you know, they buy let's say 10 of them and then they turn around and sell these things for more than what they paid for. I mean, even just this tool here. I bought this for $180, which is the same as the Charge Plus uh, TTI or titanium version. And I could probably honestly go on Facebook onto one of the EDC forms and sell this thing for easily $250 because it's all blacked out. It's G10, you know, black G10. This is a very desirable tool. And I've even been told how by some people that, you know, they want to buy this knife, or not knife, but this tool from me. And no thank you, I, I'm buying this because I wanted to keep it, not to flip it. But the problem kind of is that, that there are a lot of flippers in our community that they see a good deal, you know, they buy that Spyderco paramilitary, you know, from Blade HQ, that limited edition. They buy it for, you know, $120, and then next week you see it on Facebook for $180. And so for the people like me that do see value and do see use in this tool, it makes it harder for us to acquire these tools because they're not at the normal street price, but rather we're getting price gouged and forced to buy them from some person who's just buying a bunch of these tools strictly to make money off of the limited edition. And I think that that's more of a problem with these certain characters in the community. I won't name any names, but you know, there are specific people that are gear flippers and they live for just flipping gear and that's how they make their money. And I guess if that's your job, that's your job. But I feel like it's a very dishonest job to have. And I do not appreciate it when people go out and snap up, like I said, 10, 20, 30 limited editions just so that they can turn around and sell them on the secondary market for far more than they paid. So that to me is the bad part of limited editions. Now, now the ugly part of limited editions, I don't have as much to say, but I think there are some limited editions that the ugly kind of gets into the fact that they walk away from the original design and the purpose of the tool. With this, you know, Leatherman um, Charge Plus, it's still a Leatherman Charge Plus, basically a Leatherman Charge Plus black oxide finish. And so it does a really good job at being different and being special and being unique, you know, and having the G10 handles, but still holds true to the Charge Plus. It's not like they've added or subtracted any tools. This is still the same Charge Plus that I came to love, and I actually own three Charge Pluses, if you're wondering, and so I love the Charge Plus um, multi-tool. I think it's a great multi-tool. Like I said, I own quite a few of them, and so this is the same tool that I've come to know and love, just in a little bit different package, a little bit lighter weight, of course, way more grippy than just a metal handle, but it didn't really change the knife or the tool that much, whereas I think there's some limited editions where companies get taken away 
or a little bit, you know, they, they get a little bit wild with the design and they just create something that's not useful, not practical, and they take something that was originally a good design and originally a good tool and they just butcher it. And then they try to pass it off as a limited edition and suckers seem to just buy into it because there are people that if it just has limited edition or if they know it's a limited edition tool, they just buy it almost impulsively because it's collectible or it will be collectible at some point, you know, it will be worth something. And so I think that's kind of the ugly part of limited editions is sometimes companies know that they can just get away with kind of murdering a tool almost and just throwing it out there and people will buy it because it's a limited run or because it's a sprint run or because there's not going to be many. And to me, that kind of problem seems more like a cheap money grab, you know, where if a particular knife or tool design is kind of fading out of existence, you know, people will or companies will make, you know, a limited edition run of a particular tool to try to extend its life artificially. And I, it just doesn't sit very well for me. And once again, you know, there might be someone out there that likes the paramilitary too. But the reason why I brought that one up is not only did I just see it, you know, yesterday on Instagram, but um, I also feel like the paramilitary 2 is a really good example of this, or the Tanto paramilitary 2 is a good example of this, because Spyderco, you know, now has the Para 3, so the paramilitary 2 is, in a way, now becoming like the paramilitary 1. It has a cult following, for sure, and those who love the param paramilitary 1 love it, and people who love the paramilitary 2 love it, but by and large, it is an aging design, and so I feel like when they dropped this Tanto version, it wasn't particularly attractive, and some people will argue with that, some people like it, but I never really found the design particularly fitting of that blade style and design, and once again, to me, it feels more like a cheap money grab. Uh, or Spyderco is trying to make this, the paramilitary too relevant again. Like, they're trying to bring it back into light and say, hey, you know, we still have this paramilitary too. You know, we still make it. It's still cool. You guys should buy some more of them. And, you know, now we're offering a different blade design. And so for me, when companies do that kind of thing, it makes it feel like less they're trying to not really, you know, test the market or proof a concept as much as they are just trying to cheaply grab your money. And that could just be my opinion on that fact. You know, like I said, I could definitely be wrong. I'm sure people will come into the comments and say, hey, you know, I bought that Tanto Spider Co. Paramilitary 2, and I love it to death. And honestly, you know, if you do, similar to, you know, the G10 uh, Charge Plus that I have, you know, there are people that think it's an absolute piece of trash, and they're like, why the hell did you buy that G10, you know, piece of trash Leatherman, you know? It fits me, I like it, and it makes me happy. And that's like the core of the conversation when you buy gear for yourself is, you know, does it make you happy? Does it make you, you know, do you like using it? And so if you like using that Tanto Paramilitary 2, then good. But I see it more as, like I said, it's an aging design and they're trying to keep the product alive and keep it relevant by making limited editions. So anyways, that's kind of been my uh, rant, similar to Cedric Ada. I just think that those are some points that I thought were valuable and some points that I thought were worth noting. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I would heavily recommend you guys check out Cedric Ada. Uh, he did a really good video talking about limited editions and you know, I think he goes into depth a little bit more than I do in certain aspects. Uh, so definitely recommend that video to check it out and to, you know, get an understanding of limited editions and as always I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below you know what are your thoughts have you bought into any limited editions do you not buy into limited editions do you you know not buy into sprint runs um yeah so as always guys god bless and I'm out